innovation, risk, money. Silicon Valley conjures images of cutting edge technology, fearless spirits, and people who become billionaires overnight. Silicon Valley is a place where people are always looking to the future. It's always about what's coming next. It's the best place in the world to build a, a consumer internet company. Larry and Sergey always wanted to make an environment that was really innovative. The technology, of course, is permeating everywhere. But what makes Silicon Valley special? What are the characteristics of world's technology and entrepreneurship heaven? In this episode of Innovation Lab, we'll visit companies and entrepreneurs that are riding the next wave of technology and Stanford University, the mythical heart pumping at its core. It was a journalist named Don Heffler who gave Silicon Valley its name in 1971. There were a bunch of small companies out here that were building microchips and the, they were using silicon to build them. And so Don Heffler said, we should call this place Silicon Valley. At the heart of Silicon Valley is Stanford University. It opened its doors in 1891 with a founding grant from Jane and Leland Stanford, a Republican governor who made a fortune from the Central Pacific and Southern Pacific Railroads, which he had helped to found. After his only child died at 15, Stanford and his wife bequeathed more than 8,000 acres of farmland to found a university in their son's name. Some trace the symbiotic relationship between Stanford and Silicon Valley to Stanford's founding. It was kind of the Wild West. The gold rush was still on, and California hadn't been a state very long, roughly 30 years. People who went there had to be pioneers, and pioneers had two qualities. One, they had to be adventurers, but they were also community builders. What's made Silicon Valley happen is that Geographically, it was very limited space. You, you had mountains on one side, you had the bay on the other side, you had San Francisco north, there wasn't a lot of room to grow. So the fact that this was a valley kept people all smushed together in one place, exchanging ideas, and that was very important. At Stanford, more than elsewhere, the university and business forge a borderless community in which making money is considered virtuous. Starting with William Hewlett and David Packard, the list of students who became successful entrepreneurs is huge. Most recent examples include Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger, the founders of Instagram, and their classmate, Daniel Ackerman Greenberg, founder of ShareThrough. One of my professors and mentors, a guy named BJ Fogg, runs a persuasive technology lab at Stanford. And uh, yeah, I taught the class had about 80 students, and out of that class, I think, came probably 20 different companies, one of which is now ShareThrough. I taught a class that started out as more of an intellectual research class. How do you use these intellectual theories to drive behavior and virality and sharing? And it quickly actually evolved into more of an incubator type class. Uh, ShareThrough offers solutions for brands based on data analysis, social media trends, and academic research to help marketers understand what viral marketing is really about. It's located in downtown San Francisco. I actually started this company out of Stanford. Uh, this company's been around almost four years now. Started with my co-founder, Rob Van. We met in the Stanford class that we were teaching, and out of that class, ended up starting this company. So fast forward four years, here we are later. The recent most famous pair of former Stanford students are, no doubt, Sergey Brin and Larry Page. Born from their days at the university, Google has become a synonym of innovation in the internet space, and clearly dominates the landscape in Mountain View as you get off Highway 101 and head to 1600 Amphitheater Parkway. Innovation is at the heart of Google. So from the earliest days, Larry and Sergey always wanted to make an environment that was really innovative because they believed that was the heart of what made a great company and it always makes it exciting for engineers. So they always encouraged really big thinking. So even when they launched Google, it was doing things that no other search engine had done. So for instance, they, ke they kept a copy of the whole web. Uh, in order to just serve up the snippet. So they've always encouraged us to take big bets and make uh, big changes. So to create an environment for that, the first thing that they did was to create a very loose organizational structure and um, encouragement of employee initiative. So there was this notion of 20% time. So every Googler can take up to 20% of the time to work on a project of their choosing. Even if I'm the manager, I cannot say, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's entirely up to the employer to what they want to do.